Hi everyone, this is Jolie Boucher, and today I'm going to show you how students can code their book snaps using Google Drawings. So over here I have a key with all my symbols and the descriptions. I also included thought bubbles, dialogue, and text boxes, and I have bitmojis here. So I work at an elementary school, so I might include bitmojis already since students are too young to use them themselves. So I could have male and female bitmojis so students could share their thinking through pictures. But my favorite thing to do would be to have have students use a free app called Sticky to create their own images like this. And it gives you a transparent background. It's so easy. Then you could just have them make their stickies one time and they could use them for the whole year. So they could use facial expressions and hand gestures and they would just go to insert image. And once they're uploaded into the Google Drive, they could just click on the images right here and insert them into their Google Drawings. Okay, and they show up with the clear background like this and they would just resize them and they could use them all year. So that's really fun and I am very excited to have my students do that. So here I had students go to insert image and take a snapshot of the text. So all you would do is just go to take a snapshot and you could take a picture of the um, page that they want to annotate. Okay, so here we go. So now, if students want to annotate, they can use anything here, and they could also come up with their own system. But I like having the key over here so students have some idea of the different types of things they should be thinking about. So for example, right here, students might see a good example of writer's craft. So it's saying that Dr. Trindler's face looked like he had a mask on, so they might underline this while they're creating a screencast or they could just use the line tool right here and then once they have done that they might um, put in a text box so I'm just going to copy control C and paste it and now they can have the text box right here and they might say that that is writer's craft so they can copy the um, key and move it down here and they could write um, Good example of figurative language. And that is something they could talk about with their book club. Okay. Um, also, um, they could use the images. So let's say they don't like tests and they are making a connection that they worry about tests as well and they want to share that. So I'm just going to bring this forward. So order, um, let's see, and then I can bring that image forward. And maybe the student wants to include a thought here about the text, so they might put in their thought bubble and resize it to make it a little bit larger. Okay, so there's thumbs down, and the student is going to make a connection with the student, so they're going to copy and paste the link, and they are going to write their connection thought, so they could write um, text to self. That's the type of connection they had. And I to always worry while taking a test. So the student can share their thoughts and their connections right here by including this thought bubble and resize the thought bubble so everything fits and it's easy to read. Okay, and maybe right here they have a question, like why do they want to stay at a 70%? Why does the student want to keep their score at a 70% and just have a C, which would be normal? Why would they settle for that? So maybe they want to share a question about the text, so they're going to use maybe this bitmoji, and maybe they once again want to highlight while they create their screencast, okay? And then maybe they want to put in their thoughts here. So... They could copy the thought bubble or they could just put in another text box and maybe they are going to write something on the text like why would the student settle for a c i wouldn't okay so this is a great way for students to just share their thinking about the text and the final step would be for them to make a screencast talking about it so they could even use Screencastify, and when they use the record tab option, they can have access to the highlighters right here, and they could annotate the text as they work and as they talk. That way you have captured the student thinking. So I hope you enjoyed learning how students can code their book snaps using Google Drawings. I see a lot of potential here, and I hope you enjoyed the screencast. Take care.